Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Kleena here and today I'm going to be taking you through the solution to question 4 from this Junior Cert higher level paper. So let's get right into it. So we're given three triangles A, B and C and we're told that the given lengths of the sides in each triangles are in centimetres where X and Y are both natural numbers. So we're also told that in the question we must take the perimeter to mean the length of the perimeter. So let's look at question A. Question A tells us that the perimeter of triangle A is 8 centimetres. Two of the sides have length 2 centimetres and 3.5 centimetres, and we can see that in the diagram. We're asked to find out the third length of triangle A. So we know that the three sides must add up to 8 centimetres, because that's the perimeter. So we have 2 plus 3.5, and we're going to call this X, okay? Actually, no, we'll call it a different letter just because we have X further on in the question. I'm going to call it A. So 2 plus 3.5 plus A is equal to 8. So A is equal to 8 minus 2. So we're bringing across these values, but we, we must change the signs. So we take away 3.5 as well. So 8 minus 2 is 6 minus 3.5 gives us 2.5. So A is equal to 2.5 centimetres. And that's our final answer for question A. And for this question, you're going to get five marks. Now the first part of question B asks us to write down the perimeter of triangle B in terms of X. So let's have a look at triangle B. So in triangle B, we have the three sides which add up to the perimeter. So let's add them all together to give us the perimeter in terms of x. So that's 3 plus 2x plus 2x plus 1. So let me write this down and simplify it. So we can add 2x plus 2x to give us 4x and we can add 3 plus 1 to give us 4. So it's equal to 4x plus 4 and that is the perimeter of triangle B in terms of x. And for this question you are going to get 10 marks but that's with the second part as well. So for question B1 and 2, you're going to get 10 marks. So now let's go on to the second part of question B to see how we can get these 10 marks. So the second part follows on from B part 1. It tells us that the perimeter of the triangle B is 24 centimetres and it asks us to use this to work out the value of x. So this is the perimeter of triangle B. So 4x plus 4 is the perimeter, but we're told that the perimeter is 24. So let's work out the value of x. So 4x is equal to 24 minus 4, because we're bringing this across, and it has to change its sign. So 4x is equal to 20. So x is equal to, and I'm going to bring this across, and it becomes a divisor, 20 divided by 4, which is 5. So x is equal to 5, and that is our answer for B part 2. Now we're told in question C that the perimeters of the, tri of the three triangles A, B and C form a linear sequence. So that means that their perimeters, when they're going up in ascending order, they go up by the same amount every time. Now we're told that triangle C has the largest perimeter. So the perimeter of triangle C is, is k centimetres and it asks us to find the value of k. So I'm going to write down the perimeter of A and B. So let's scroll back here. So we found out that the perimeter of triangle B was 24 centimetres. And we found out that the perimeter of triangle A was 8 centimetres. So it goes 8, 24. So 8 centimetres here, 24 centimetres. So what's the jump between this? So 24 minus 8 is equal to 16. So it jumps by 16 centimetres. So from B to C, it also has to jump from first 16 centimetres because it forms a linear sequence, we're told. So 24 plus 16 will give us 40 centimetres. So find the value of K. K is equal to 40. And that's our answer for C part 1. Now we're asked in the final part of this question, question C part 2, Hence, that means using the information that we've just found, work out the value of y, where y is a natural number. 
So the perimeter of C is 40 centimeters. But that's equal to when we add the three sides of C. And when we add the three sides of C, we're going to have 5 plus y squared plus y squared plus 3. So let's write this down. Now, so let's find out the value of y. So what we want to do is we want to isolate the y. So we have 40 minus 5. We're going to bring these across because they aren't part of the y squared or y. So 40 minus 5 minus 3 is equal to, and we can group these together and we can call it 2y squared. So 40 minus 5 minus 3 is going to give us 32. That's equal to 2y squared. So now I'm going to bring this 2 and divide it across. So 32 divided by 2 is equal to y squared. So 16 is equal to y squared. We want to get rid of the y squared because we're not looking for the value of y squared. We're looking for the value of y. So what we're going to do is find the square root of both sides. So the square root of 16 is equal to the square root of y squared. The square root of 16 is 4. And you can use your calculator for that if you're unsure. And the square root of y squared is just y. So y is equal to 4. And that is our final answer. So for C part 1 and 2, you're going to get a total marks of 5. So that's all for this question, guys. I hope that you found this video helpful. And I hope that if you had any issues with this question, they are now cleared up. So I'll see you all in the next video.